you've stocked up quite a bit of credit card debt. Correct. You know, actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Chelsea, how the heck do you have eleven credit cards? <laughs> so you're paying four thousand six hundred dollars on the cruise when you're currently stacking. Are you ready for this? No. Yes. All right. Still, given your financial <laughs> situation, I don't know if I would have yeah, purchased not, a fifty thousand dollar car. Yes. Well, it's pretty. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, gear up, guys, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Finance Action. My name is Roman, and together we'll dive into someone's personal finances, learning from their stories and taking action for their financial future. Follow me along as we discover the story of Chelsea. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well, thank you. Awesome, Chelsea. Let's look at your profile. So you are 32 years old. You're originally from Virginia. You live in Seattle and currently work as a full-time accountant. Yes. Awesome. We uh, want to look at how you perceive your own finances from chilling to Mayday and you've rated yourself as yikes. So tell me a little bit more about that finance perception and why would you rate yourself as such? Well, I'm just not saving any money and I can feel it and I can feel just like things accumulating and kind of feeling a little out of control about it, but kind of holding on a little bit because everything's getting paid. So okay. it's just like gritting the teeth and just being like, okay, we can one more month, one more <laughs> month. Okay. How long has it been since you've been financially struggling, I almost say? It probably all got kicked into high gear last year okay um because like last year was just one thing right after the other of just trauma 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 wow. so it started off with i had to have emergency surgery five days before tax season oh or before the tax deadline in april but then my car was stolen two weeks before my wedding my car phone keys and wallet Oof, okay <laughs> yeah so that wasn't great so i had to buy a new car kind of hastily after the wedding after we got covid so we didn't go on a honeymoon. So I had some issues with the unemployment department as well. So I was on unemployment during the pandemic, like most people, because I was a waitress for the past 10 years. For those of you that know, don't know, they got uh, basically Nigerian princed, and they got scammed from all of their money <laughs> from all these fake unemployment accounts. And then they kind of took that out on the individual mm -hmm. and made everybody yes. reapply in March of 2021. Okay. And when I had to reapply in March of 2021, <laughs> the accounting job was no longer in demand and the waitressing job was in demand. So they were like, you may or may not have to pay back these benefits, but we're gonna keep paying you in the interim. Once January hit, I basically had no extra income being put aside and everything was just going to bills. Okay. So January really hyped up. And so in your case, you are managing the income and expenses of your partner as well, right? Correct. So we will be looking at you as two units, but here you're representing as one. Right. Okay. Cool. So let's start first with our first section that looks at income and assets. So Chelsea, let's look together at your income. How much income would you say both of you guys make um, together? Per year, about $120,000. $120,000. Together. Okay. Yeah. So that brings you to about $7,000 net per month. Mm -hmm. Do you expect any additional payments or any increase? Yeah, I do anticipate um, hopefully in the ballpark of like a $10,000 raise. And then I also have like a little side business where I do just one or two people's uh, books, financial books for their businesses. And that's going to be like $250 a month in that ballpark. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Cool. So let's sum it together and say you're going to make about $130,000 per year, uh, which brings your monthly net between you and your partner to $7,500. Okay. Deal? Sure. Perfect. Let's move on together as we think about your assets. So you have multiple accounts here that I can see. You have one checking account with a a balance of $150. You also have two saving accounts, one with $4,500, another one with $3,700. So that's good here on that front. A little bit of saving in cash and liquidity. That's always nice to have. And you also have two investment accounts, one for stocks mm -hmm. and one for crypto. Both of them have $4,000 each. Correct. That's nice. How have been your uh, crypto investments going? I mean... <laughs> 
Uh, I'm a bad were you holder. being cautious? I'm holding, hold. <laughs> yeah, but were you, were you cautious, or did you invest I, on the big ones, or did you? I did the big ones. Yeah, okay. I did. I did the big ones. I did the ones that do staking for the most okay. part. Oh, yeah. For the most part, <laughs> some of them are fine. I have been getting some good rewards uh, from that, which is nice. Um, but I was more cautious, definitely like Ethereum and Bitcoin, mm -hmm. but a bunch of like little holdings here and there. But okay. th things are on the up. Yeah, for right, now. <laughs> right. Uh, no financial advice. We'll see how that evolves. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, okay, cool. And then you also have an area of $25,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all together right now, if we sum the sum of your assets, including your retirement account for you and your partner, you have about $41,000. Yay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> when it comes to liquidity, so I'm taking out the retirement account. I really don't want to touch that, at least in, not in the short term. Okay. Uh, please do not touch your retirement account except for huge emergency. Uh, so right now, as we look into your total asset liquid, the sum of your checking, savings, and your investment, you have 16350 Sounds great. I mean, not great, but it sounds... It sounds, it sounds uh, accurate? It sounds accurate, yes. Let's go. Okay, cool. That's nice to hear. Okay. Do you have any other accounts? Any other assets? No. No other assets. Mm -mm. Okay, sweet. So um, I guess that wraps it, our sections for assets and income. And now we'll get into the nitty-gritty, the complexity on your case, Chelsea, the expense and debt. One of the first expenses that we look at is your rent. How much do you pay per rent per month? Two thousand and twenty-seven dollars. Okay, two thousand twenty-seven dollars. That's fair. Uh, including utilities, we'll add what, like two hundred dollars on top of that. Uh, yeah, electric is about two hundred, but water, sewer, garbage is included. Okay, sweet. So that brings your total to two thousand two hundred and fifty. So your housing expense against your income comes in at thirty percent. We like to see it at 28% is the good number. Oh, yeah, so yeah. you are very close to it. Yeah. We'll say, all right, you're good on that front. We'll In the see. summer, it'll be closer because the electric bill will be lower. That's right. <laughs> That's good. Okay. So for now, housing, I'm not too concerned for both of you guys in Seattle. Um, not too bad. Okay. I want to move on to your transportation expense. <laughs> Thank you for providing us the statement on the account. You own $43,000 on your car. Correct. What car do you drive? I drive a 2020 RAV4 Hybrid. Okay. Limited trim. Oh, limited trim? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's uh, almost as premium as this. How many miles do you have on it? 40,000. Okay. So 40,000 miles on uh, Toyota. The private party value on your car right now is... Less. Thirty-six thousand five hundred. Sure, <clears throat> sure. So uh, you know, looking at uh, how much right now you are on your car against how much it's worth, you are underwater by six thousand five hundred. Okay. However, when did you buy it? June or July, rather. July of twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty two. That's fair. Yeah. What was the thought process behind buying such an expensive car? What What, what was going on? It was a lot of fuck it mentality, to be honest, okay. um, because because my car had just been stolen two weeks before my wedding, oh. and then we got COVID, and I had I was running out on the the rental that mm -hmm. my insurance was providing. It was kind of like I need a car now, mm. so my other car. <laughs> I was so sad. My other car only had nineteen hundred dollars left on it on the. But payments. you got insurance. They yeah, so they paid. paid they it. paid all of. I got basically a little bit more. <laughs> back nice. from what I originally paid for it, which was nice. Okay. Um, I put six thousand dollars on the Toyota, but it was my other car. I knew I had certain things that I wanted in my next car, and mm. while I would have preferred to have had time to save up for those things, like yeah. blinking the the side mirror blinkers, because yeah. that for someone who's ADHD and autistic, it's nice to have an extra little set of like, hey, there's someone over here, like that you might not see because you have a little bit of blindness over here. So, I see. Okay. Um, that and then the air conditioned seats really got me. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I really, uh, I like amenities and I get hot and overstimulated. And mm. so if I can have like as much as that as possible, that is ideal. So that was the, I, the process, the thought process, barring this car getting stolen, uh, mm -hmm. I plan to have it for the rest of its life. <laughs> yes, I'm hopeful, especially when we look at the payment for it. I mean, your interest rate on it is not too bad. Correct. 3.7%. Hey, that's pretty good. Uh, right now, the interest rates on used cars range generally yeah, even higher than 7%, even with excellent credits. That's just the environment that we are in. Mm -hmm. But you're still paying $620 per month on your car. Yeah, that's Okay. Sucks. 
I mean, uh, do you guys have one car each with your partner or? Just the one car. Okay, okay. Assuming standard type of expenses around that. So that brings your total transportation expense per month to 12%. We like it at 15. Oh, okay. Of total income, gotcha. Of total income. Uh, and that's we like it at 15 we like it at 15 so you're below on that front because I'm looking at two people right and you guys are sharing it (laughs) still given your financial (laughs) situation I don't know if I would have purchased a $50,000 car yes well it's pretty okay (laughs) okay so uh, gear up guys it's coming (laughs) awesome okay so Right, I mean, look, looking at that, not too bad. Not the preferable purchase, mm, given your situation. But uh, right now, it's not like we can act on it. You're slightly underwater on it. So at least you bought a a brand that tends to be reliable. Um, RAV4 are generally very solid models. Hybrid as well, you're saving on fuel. Okay, okay, I will say fine. Uh, We'll see, we'll move on. You've stocked up quite a bit of credit card debt. Correct. You know, actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So, eleven cards you have. Let's uh, let's roll through it. Sixteen thousand six hundred on eleven percent. Here, seven thousand two hundred on nineteen percent. Sixteen hundred on eighteen percent. Three thousand seven hundred on twenty-five percent. Four thousand on nineteen percent. Six thousand six hundred and ten on twenty-three percent. 4,300 on 2.9%, 4,000 on 0% consolidated, and then last one, 14,000 on 0% as well. Um, Mm -hmm. Chelsea, how the heck do you have 11 credit cards? Like, is it your credit card shopping? There was a couple in the past that were like for cashback rewards. It was like one or two of those for cashback rewards. One of them was I got for... Southwest rewards. One of them I got for Alaska rewards. Yeah. Um, all based on trips where they're like, if you buy this and you open a credit card, you can save six hundred dollars on this trip. Yeah, but you're rewarding them right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then so the ones with zero percent interest and eleven percent interest, those were consolidations from taking the high interest debt and putting them to the zero percent interest, mm-hmm. and that lasted for twelve months. And there was no right. balance transfer fee on those, which was nice. Um, which is okay. why I did that. Yeah. And then uh, the there's a Costco one. But this is like over like 10 years I've accumulated this. So it's not like I'm so opening. So how much interest do you think you've paid on this? You've, you must have paid thousands I'm sure. of interest. Yeah, I'm sure. I did pay $27,000 off in 21 months. There you go. Uh, and I got everything down to zero. Oh. And then, what happened then? What? the pandemic happened. And then I didn't have any money. And then... Well, it was like the pandemic yeah. helped me pay them off, and then, and then the surgery, and then the car, and then the wedding, and oh, yeah, the second the surgery, and the. <laughs> so, so you, you, so how much did you spend on the wedding? In the ballpark of forty thousand, and that includes everything. We got married on a Thursday to try and alleviate cost. To have a wedding like that in Seattle for as nice as it was, including like photographer and all of that, like I know I could have done it cheaper in some aspects but i feel like i did a pretty good job considering i know people are paying at minimum 60 to 100k for a wedding on a saturday yeah, but you didn't think about budgeting for it i was in school and i was getting unemployment and it was like we're gonna get married next year okay i see i see okay. <laughs> you're right on, on, on those okay that's that's fair looking at your 30-day statements okay uh you're not going crazy neither on those cards, so then let's move on to the next one. 12,700 at an interest rate of 19%. Okay, let's look at the statement on this. Eyebrows, eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carnival Cruise. Correct. <laughs> $4,600. Correct. On a credit card that you have a balance that you're carrying at 19% interest. Yes. <laughs> But what the, like what the heck is going on, Chelsea? Remember when we got COVID after the wedding and we couldn't go on a honeymoon? Yeah. So this is the honeymoon. We haven't been on a vacation since 2019, really. Okay. Um, and that includes all beverages and the insurance. So I'm not gonna have to buy any drinks on the boat. <laughs> and if we need to cancel, it covers that too. So if you need to cancel the cruise. Okay, so if the cruise cancel or if you cancel? If I cancel. Okay. 
Yeah. How many people is that for? Two. <laughs> it's just for both of you guys? Yes. How long is it at 4,600? Because we got a suite. <laughs> and it's okay. going to be so good. <laughs> so you're paying $4,600 on the cruise when you're currently stacking. Are you ready for this? No. Yes. All right. $176,000 of debt. Yeah, that sounds right. Out of which $60,000 is credit card debt. 60? 60? 60 is credit card debt related. Whoops. Well, the, also the thought was that the tax return would pay for that. Yeah, but I want the tax. I don't want the tax return to go on a <laughs> damn cruise. No, I mean, especially if it's like two of you. I'm not saying don't freaking get it. Yeah. I'm not saying that. I'm saying is that the right time? Is that the right time? Can 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 we do something in the interim that will satisfy short terms? Short terms uh, for then at some point, give, t give yourself something like this when you're done with some of your debt and then it's a freaking reward and you're like, damn, you know, we deserved it. Okay. Like right now, sunking on, no, you know, don't get me wrong, Chelsea. Uh, sunking on debt, you, you, no, you cannot afford this. There is no shot. Yeah, there is no shot. You know, there, there are cruises that you can take. That's this is off. definitely not the cheapest option on this right. cruise, for sure. I am aware of that. This was another fucking moment, but okay. it was thought of as a honeymoon and family vacation mm. because my mom did pay for a good part of the wedding and I haven't been back home or visited in a while. So I was trying to make it as easy on us both emotionally while we also like hung out with them. Oh, so your parents are also coming on the cruise? My parents and my sister and her and my niece and my nephew and her boyfriend and his son. Oh, yes. so it's a family one. Okay. Yeah. But so do, you, do you need the suite though? Like, I mean, how much is the basic room for it? All right. I'm not going to say the basic room, but the regular balcony room. Okay. The, balcony? <laughs> the okay. regular balcony room that's the same size as the interior rooms, probably like $1,500 less for two of us. Yeah, but still $3,000. No. This is just like... No, no, how long is this? Is this like six five day, months? Six days. Six days. Six days for... Listen. Six okay. days? My mom loves cruises. <laughs> yeah, are you going on the, the royal? Like, are you going on... We're having a, We're flying to Virginia and then cruising out from and there. And that's not even including the travel. No, no. But this I'm, is a $5,000 vacation. No, correct. No. Yes. Okay. We have not gone on a vacation in many, many moons. So right. that is a part of the justification. But I understand okay. and I see where you're coming from. Okay. <laughs> so walk me briefly through the mentality of... You make a purchase and you know you're in a situation like this. You're just like, hey, it's okay. I will figure it out later on. Yeah. What, what's, or, or you, you try to think to like, just forget it, that it even exists. Yes, because there's a thing called object permanence. And that is a concept where if you don't see something out in front of you, then you don't realize that it exists. And that includes people too. Like a lot of my friends and family back home, I don't talk to as much because it's not that I don't miss them. It's just that the feeling of missing them doesn't hit until I'm right in front of them because I, my brain doesn't realize that they're, they're gone kind mm -hmm. of thing because they're not there. So same thing with like the debt. Like when I first paid off all of that debt originally, I had a little board that like was a little backwards thermometer where I would like grow it down to the go. point where I, I wanted I could do it in chunks too. So okay. that helped a lot. We when we moved and I had to delete my entire savings to do that, that board kind of got put away. It hasn't mm. been put back up yet. So there hasn't been a visual representation of how much debt has accumulated. And so it kind of then because you have to open up this app and then you have to open up that app and another app, it kind of doesn't feel as much until yeah. you lay it all out. Oh there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A full page of, of debt here is coming up. I mean, yes. we are looking at rest of your debt because there is not only just credit card. You also have uh, almost $20,000 of the government that you need to pay back for that, uh, you know, an employment benefit that you're fighting. Yes. But, you know, that's $600 per month. Do you have student loans? Yes. And they're all hanging out at zero right now. But uh, 30000 is from my first degree, which was in art. A minor in psychology, I know. Oof, Winner. <laughs> Listen, in Virginia, I could have lived on being an artist down there because my rent was $250 a month. Let's go. So when I was working at the golf club and selling old rich white men my paintings for thousands of dollars, yes, I was able to live off of like kind of waiting tables in my art. But when I moved out here, it was like, 
no, you got to hustle or you're not going to make it. And I yeah. drove across country in a 91 Honda Civic. And I'd had that car for 10 years and I kept it for the, until I got my last car that was stolen. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, yeah. when you come out here and then you're like, oh, sink or swim, that's when you become a waitress for 10 years. Be yeah. an accountant. We have a shortage. Please and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So in the captain, you should get stuck. You know, a fortune on um, debt. Well, I also have ADHD, so I have some spending issues, like of like okay. a, of like instant gratification, or like you know, not thinking before you buy something, kind of a thing, or having too many fuck it moments when you're tired, and buying things when you're tired, and things. But are you ready to say to say fuck it to your fuck it moments? Yes. Are you no? But are you yes. really doing it? Yes, I am. That's why I'm here. That's why, that's why all of those statements are a half of a page, except for the checking account, because I've stopped using my credit cards yeah. for the most part, and I've tried to only use my debit card so that I am limiting the amount of money that I'm accumulating. So I mm -hmm. have taken a step. Some early steps, yes. Okay, I can see that. Yeah. Except for the $5,000 vacation. <laughs> Which okay. I will not justify anymore. <laughs> all right, all right, that's fair. Um... Okay, so how much debt in student loans do you have? 55,000 total. Okay, federal? Federal. Okay, so you're not being a dime on it, but at some point the hammer is going to hit. Yes. Okay, and so what does your partner think about that? Yeah, Sean just recently got officially diagnosed with ADHD. Not that we didn't know that it was there, but it's like we've got insurance now. Sean, with the ADHD, it's hard for like the executive function of like making the doctor appointment kind of a thing like that and they also have a, a I don't know if you've heard of the tendencies the four tendencies by Gretchen Rubin so it's how we respond to expectations and so there are four kinds there is the um, upholder there's the questioner there's the obliger and then there's the rebel and depending on which one you are depends on how like you expect you react to expectations from other people as well as from yourself so the upholder is like the nike phrase like just do it like you can do whatever you're like yeah i'm just going to do it and it's going to be done and then i'm just going to do it the um the obliger is like i'll go to the gym if i know that i have to meet a friend there or if they have an accountability buddy kind of a thing mm -hmm. the questioner is like well why why do i need to do it like they have to understand the why behind it before they want to do it and the rebel it's like F you i'm not doing it and you can't make me do it and i also can't make me do it what is he rebel <laughs> once we figured that out it was easier for us to communicate because then i wasn't like well you you need to do it just do it and then sean was just like absolutely not you know kind of a thing and it was and once we realized like how to talk to each other it was like hey this is on the agenda please get to it when you're feeling ready for it kind of a conversation it was a different conversation and like i don't know that's how other people might react to like your advice too it's like depending on how their expectations of themselves and others are i see Thank you. That's, uh, that's good. All right, let's move on. Which brings me to our next segment together, which we call the money case. Oh dear. Back for the money <laughs> case with uh, our, <laughs> our guest today, Chelsea. Ooh, it's gonna I'm not going to be laughing in like two seconds, I bet. Okay, so Chelsea here, let's look together at your financial situation. You are, uh, have accumulated quite a bit of debt over the past couple of years, many of which are credit card, for which you're paying a fairly high interest. Some of them you've been able to consolidate and right now are paying 0%, but as I mentioned, the hammer is going to hit. Right now, my assessment is purely looking at the interest that you're paying as of today. Okay, the interest that you're paying today. Per month, Chelsea. Simply of interest, meaning money that purely goes to garbage. Right. You are paying Chelsea per month. Look at this. Uh, $731. Yeah. Do you know that I calculated that out? You've done it? I've done that math. I just, just see it. It's a bit much. Almost four months of just interest that you're paying is your damn trip to, to the Carnival Cruise. Overpriced, but... Or, or whatever you, <laughs> we want to call this. You know, this is... This is Almost 10% of your income. This is what is sunking you little by little yeah. at 32 years old. Okay? I don't want this anymore. I'm, I, I'm tired of uh, seeing this. I want us to find you a solution, like seriously. Because you, you can't continue to stack your contact and have impulse purchases. We will provide you with a recommendation, no financial advice, that will tell you exactly how long is it going to take for you to get out of your debt? How can we best use some of your assets that you can be have that we've discussed together? Mm -hmm. And what should be your mindset and your approach to how you spend your money? 
Okay? Okay. All right, as we uh, just completed the money case segment, let's move on to what I would do if I was in your shoes, Chelsea. This is looking at different methodologies and uh, for the purpose of finance action, we've selected one that function as follow. We identified your needs, your wants, and the last category that I call gold, this is other. Let's first start with your needs. This is the money at minimum today for you and your partner that you need to make every month, no matter what's going on, to pay for your minimum payments on all the loans and the credit card debt and all of what you need to pay off. Some of the transportation, I mean, including your car, as well as your housing and uh, given for food, okay? In the mode, hashtag survival. Eh? The goal is really survive. Shit hits the fan, both of you lose their job. This is how much you would be spending to survive. Okay. Okay. Today, because you have such high debt and minimum payments on your cards, mm -hmm. The total amount of your needs sums to 6,500 per month. Okay. Which represents 85% of your income. Right. We like it at 50%. Sure. Okay. Moving on to your wants. As we looked together into some of the expenses that you have, which you don't spend crazy per month. Your expenses are fairly minimal. Is all the stacked up debt that you've collected over time. Uh, the rest, again, is maybe going once or twice to a restaurant. We'll discuss about the carnival or crew or, or the, the, the cruise, whatever. Um, but for your expenses, for your wants, is there anything that to you is very crucial that I should be including in your wants? Makeup and hair. Um, uh, what, what, what's the sum on that? $90 a month. That's it? Yeah, because I get my hair done every quarter. And okay. then makeup is spent every quarter also. Okay. Anything else? Weed. Okay, that's but fair. But Sean works at a... Yeah, Sean works at a cannabis store. So we do get a sample bag, um, oh. which is nice. So that offsets a lot of expense. And we also get a very steep discount. So max... Per month on that is like 70 bucks. Okay. Even if you are in a tough spot, but mm -hmm. you still need to live. Yeah. But you have to be 100% positive that you can consent to it. I'm going to give you $150 per month okay. on your wants. Okay. 150 not the one dime more. Okay. If you can tie to this, this leaves your last category, the goal category, Based on your current income, assuming you get that promotion of $10,000 extra, mm -hmm. this leaves $980 per month that you can put towards savings. But that is assuming that you are in hashtag survival mode on your needs. Huh? Mm -hmm. No more some of those expenses here that we look together and some of the restaurants, etc. Starbucks, you have a little bit of Starbucks here, steam and stuff. I don't care. You figure it out with your partner. You assume your needs. You have 150 on the side, either mm -hmm. makeup, weight, whatever. If he wants to, do, if they want to do steam or something, that's okay. You budget it out. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I want you every single month, starting from today, to save a thousand dollar on the side. But you have to be in needs mode, mm -hmm. and I have listed all the needs, and will be providing you ultimately by the end of our sessions. But those are realistic. I'm not here crafting a, a, a fake story. This is just basic needs, basic as they come. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this is what I would do. Number one, let me tell you in numbers, since you're an accountant, okay? How much will your cruise cost you if the 4,600? If today you put that amount, 4,600 that you're going to spend in five days, and you put it on an investment account, and you follow, uh, let's say, uh, you know, the S&P 500, which historically returns about 10% a year. Mm -hmm. By the time you retire, your cruise for the five day is going to cost you $67,000. Wow. So many. $67,000 yeah. is the cost of your cruise. If instead of investing that money into your credit card, which I'm not even accounting for some of the trip and the interest that you're going to have to pay on that card, because it's probably going to be on a 20% card. So this just per month of interest is going to be an extra, you know, what, $80 mm -hmm. per month of interest. 
is going to cost you $67,000 if instead you put that money aside on an investment account and you don't touch it, you don't see it for the next, what, 28 years. Since you're 32, I'm expecting you retire at 60. Hmm. $67,000. That's so many dollars. Forget about it. Forget about it. <sighs> now, now, I know you have your family and so on, but uh, Chelsea, you, you, you're being just so much of interest on this. Um, could there be a way? I don't know. I'm, I mean... Personally, if I were in your shoes, you not going to like it. I just wouldn't go to the, to the cruise. Or I would find a way to work with your parents to share a bunk bed in their room. Make it work this way. Say, hey, you know, mom, I am, um, I'm, I'm super tight. I'm super tight. And we've discussed about it today. I'm stacking tens of thousands of dollars on credit card. I love to go with you. Is there any chance... You know, maybe we can upgrade your room and um, and I can maybe put, what, $500, $1,000 and be in that room. I know it's not what you're dreaming of, but if you follow what we're going to discuss together, mm -hmm. in about a couple of years, you're out of the bush and then you can afford yourself something decent. Mm -hmm. it's, hard to, it's hard to hit, but what do you want to do? Do you want to be sunk? And I mean, one of your short-term goals that we haven't discussed yet, but that you've wrote in your application is... You want to save to buy a house, you want to pay your interest debt, and you want to retire at 45. Right. Please don't get me wrong. Yeah. yeah. What I'm seeing today goes against every of your short-term goals yeah. and long-term goals. If you want to twist yourself, you're gonna, it's going to have to come with efforts. And you're making already efforts with some of your payments, but you, you just can't afford that. Mm -hmm. you, you really, really can't. But in your case, it is shooting yourself in the foot. Okay. So find any way to get out of this. Now, this is my recommendation. My recommendation is what follows a debt avalanche method. So you have two types of, you know, to pay back your debt, there are two types. Debt avalanche, debt snowball. Avalanche is as follow. You pay the highest interest first. You pay the highest interest first. Mm -hmm. In your case, you have some saving accounts. And I know it's money that we love to have that is generally safe for emergency. I will need you to take $6,000 out of the $8,000, $200 that you have on your checking account, you take that money and you pay instantly your credit card debt that has the highest interest, which is the one at 25%. Okay. So you're already going to be able to kick out one of those payments. Great. That's already 230 saved per month on top of the older interest, etc. You're also going to follow pretty much card by card, little by little, the highest interest first, and you're going to use that gold category that I mentioned, $1,000 a month, no matter what. I don't know what you do with your partner. You, are, you have a target of $1,000 a month, and you put it towards uh, the highest credit card. Okay. In reference to the threats that you validated to me before, uh, looking at one of the components that you refer as object permanence, mm -hmm. where you, something that is tangible that you can see, potentially interact with, such as the thermometer. Why don't you create, for example, um, almost like a ch chain that you put together with credit cards payments, okay, oh. starting with the highest interest. Okay. And as you go through your payments, you would then scratch off or pull out of that chain as um, the action of accomplishing something. How does that sound at the first glance? Sounds great. Okay. Together, if you follow the methodology that I've illustrated, okay, and you're putting a thousand dollars aside, it will take you 27 months to pay all your debt, except for your student loan and the government that I believe you can potentially fight. Mm -hmm. In total, the amount of interest that you're going to pay over that course over the next two years or so is five thousand two hundred. Okay, mm -hmm. not too bad, mm -hmm. not too bad. Why? Because little by little, instead of paying that $700 here per month, you're going to pay progressively and it's going to reduce your debt, by definition, by definition, reduce your interest monthly. Okay? 27 months. Okay. How does that sound? Sounds reasonable. But do you truly believe that you are able, you're going to be able to do it? Yeah, I've done it before. Um, so I definitely think I can do it. It definitely is a visual representation for me as well. Like I, I think that that has been where things have been able to slip by because I don't have my, my board that's like, this is how much debt you actually have and you have to look at it every single day. Mm -hmm. And that I think is where I've been getting hung up for sure. So I think that if I 
take the time and I do that, that it's going to be a lot easier. And I feel really accomplished every time I look at it because I see how far I'm, I've come and how far, like, yeah, there's a lot left to go, but like, look how far I've come because like, that is so much. This is the bonus for you. One, increase your income. Yeah. I don't know what you do. Use that hybrid. Go to Uber Eats at night with your partner. It's a date night, whatever you want to do. If you're able to increase by $1,000 per month, mm -hmm. your income, and you put it 100% towards your saving, mm -hmm. you're going to save six months. Wow. Off the top of the, the repayment. Off the top of the payment. That's nice. It's going to take you 21 months. Less than two years. Exactly. Less than two years. If, let's say you hit the jackpot, each of you every month, no matter what, you give yourself a thousand dollar extra goal. I know it's a lot, but hey, if you take a you know, couple trips and you, you share it, mm -hmm. it's going to take you 18 months, oh, wow. a year and a half. There you go. You're out of the bush. But that requires living of survival, sure. an extra 150 on once and everything, every single dime. And we don't account for this trip. I'm excluding this trip. I'm sorry. Every single dime goes towards it. Okay. Are you going to take up that trip? That's not going to happen. But I will consider calling the travel agent and getting the room maybe not as grand. Mm -hmm. This trip is going to cost you five and a half months. Mm. That's a long time. One day on the dam boat is a month. A, about a month of the current situation that you live in. Mm. Bringing yourself down, bringing yourself down to having to be on, you know, living off your needs with $150 per month. Mm. One day equal to a month. Is that worth it? I would love for you to reconsider is what I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, I just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. It's uh yeah, it's it's a big it's a big hit, but the decision is yours. You know. Fair. I'll discuss it with my spouse, and we'll take it into like I'll take what you say into into real consideration. It's not mm -hmm. going to be. I'm not gonna, I'm not brushing any of this off. Like I did this for a reason because I knew that things needed to be looked at, and I kind of need a little like harder opinion. I suppose just me being like, every fine. Because <laughs> obviously everything's not fine. So I will discuss it and we will, we will go from there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Um, well, you know, Chelsea, it was... Again, a very interesting discussion. As any guest that comes to the show, you will be living with a model that will provide you electronically that highlights how we split on those different expenses, as well as a debt repayment methodology uh, that highlights every single month how much you should be putting aside and overall the methodology of our discussion. All right, guys, um, thank you very much again for coming to Finance Action. It was a pleasure interacting with you, Chelsea. We invite you to like, subscribe, and catch us on the next episode. Until next time, à bientôt.